Welcome back to the shop, you guys. Um, talked about or, or mentioned something about the physical weight of a bow on Facebook and was kind of encouraged by somebody in the comments to talk about mass uh, and the mass theory and, and those that, that topic, I guess, just the topic of mass theory and uh, physical weight of bows and how it relates to performance. And I'm really, I'm really not uh, a pro on all that. Uh, what I would tell you is, you know, I guess the proof is in the pudding. And so we're going to give, I thought I'd take this afternoon and, and try and see for myself what the, what the difference is. So I've got, I've got the tools of today's video sitting down here. I got my little, uh, chronograph right here at the ready. We'll take that out back and shoot these two bows. I've got, um, a set of three arrows, most consistent arrows that I have. They're, uh, 480 grains each. Uh, the two bows we're looking at here are just over 50 pounds. The, the red oak bow on the front side, the wide flat limb bow is, uh, a 53 pound at 28 inches. The, uh, bow right behind it is a bow I just finished in the, uh, reflex deflex, uh, bow build along. It's a bamboo back to pay bow. Uh, what we'll do here is, uh, kind of discuss the, uh, I guess the particulars of each bow, you know, exactly uh, size, weights, measures, all these things. Try and get a feel for how their designs relate to arrow speed. So uh, here they are just kind of strung up, sitting next to one another. I think you you can see that the the tiller on these two bows is very similar. I mean, they're just a, a regular, uh, one bow is obviously longer than the other, uh, but uh, just a, a nice even tiller on those those limbs so no recurves or anything the the rear bow is a, a reflex bow it's a peri reflex so uh, obviously it's it's got a reputation attached to it but we will we will see how this works out all right so here we are um with our unstrung profiles on these two bows so you can see the the uh, peri reflex bows slightly reflex deflex design here uh, sitting ahead of the the handle by uh, quite a bit, just a little under two inches. Uh, next bow. This is a red oak uh, flat bow, just a regular old flat bow, showing a little bit of string follow. I would put that at the, you know, I mean, I, judging from here, quick look. And this is just recently unstrung. He's showing a good inch, inch and a half of string follow. Uh, if you guys follow the Boyer's Bibles, this red oak bow actually is kind of an archetypical type, archetype bow in their writings. Uh, it is a wide limbed, flat cross section bow uh, where the Mass, they talk a lot in the mass theory chapter of that book about what they would call Eiffel Tower limb tips. And so you can see where the way these tips come to a, uh, an end uh, is very drastic, or very, very quick. And the tips themselves are quite, quite narrow. So there's my thumb against that tip. And I could probably, if I really wanted to, make that even narrower. Uh, so this is a uh, red oak bow. It is 66 inches, knock to knock. All right. Uh, I take that back. I apologize. I'm looking at what I wrote here. It's 68 inches, knock to knock. Uh, I'm just going to weigh this guy up right quick. Include the string. Oh, I don't want the glare. All right. Almost 22 ounces, 21.87 ounces. And we've got bow number two here, which is 62 inches knock to knock. Again, like I had mentioned, a uh, peri reflex bow. It's bamboo and ipe. Um, and, you know, I guess here's a good comparison of width between these two bows. Uh, 
the bamboo. Oh, right out of the fade. It's about one and an eighth inches wide. And the red oak bow is a full two inches wide, uh, right out of the fade. So, uh, there's, there's that. And I will, um, right quick, take the, uh, Ipe bow over here. Here we go. Okay. Total weight, 17 ounces. And here again, just to verify that it's not on anything. So we've got a 21, almost 22 ounce bow, and then a just over 17 ounce uh, bow. Long, straight limbed bow, uh, just the straight self bow. It's really, it's a board bow, but it's a self bow. Uh, you know, it's touted in the in the Boyer's Bibles as really being the most efficient design that you can uh, make. And so uh, I'd like to see, I, I do know it shoots fast. In, in my opinion, it shoots fast, but I've, I haven't put it up, you know, uh, you know, mano a mano to the, uh, to the, some of the shorter, lighter bows. So we'll see what, uh, see what we get here. Okay, I'm gonna take three shots with the uh, red oak flat bow here. Uh, I guess we need to keep in mind that the one uh, variable in this experiment, of course, is me, the archer, and unfortunately, I'm not very consistent. Uh, so, here we go. Okay, so I think if I'm recalling correctly, the highest the highest speed I had on there was a 154, uh, with 151, 152 being about the the average here. So we'll uh, trade up now and go get the uh, Perry Reflex bow. Fourteen is accurate. One sixty nine.
duplicate one sixty. Well, we certainly learned that I am an inconsistent shooter, uh, if nothing else. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the results that we got here with our head-to-head uh, -head showing of bows. Uh, long, wide, flat-limbed bow uh, with mass taken very much into consideration. And when we talk about the mass uh, theory, uh, it's addressed in the uh, it's in the fourth volume of the. Uh, traditional Boyer's Bible, and as a matter of fact, this this design is discussed in that chapter uh, with regard to really kind of concentrating the mass toward the center of the bow and really spending a lot of effort in reducing your mass out at the tips. Um, in addition to getting a lot of the flex and the bend into the center of the bow again and kind of leveraging the tips kind of like long levers throwing throwing your arrows and so 480 grain arrows out of a 53 pound bow drawn to 28 inches and this bow actually didn't take long for me to get some pretty consistent speeds so it shot right there at the low 150s um, and i would say 152 153 is as an average uh didn't get me long didn't take very many shots for me to arrive at that uh, average uh, because I think it really took a lot of my inconsistencies out of the equation because it is, um, it's a very easy 28 inch draw. It does not stack very much at the end of the draw. Now, <clears throat> when we start talking about the shorter, more reflexed bow, uh, this is, this is a little different story. So when we talk about the mass piece of things, the bow itself just doesn't have much mass. So this bow is, is a good five ounces lighter uh, than its counterpart here. And uh, it did shoot faster, there's no doubt about that. Uh, and, and as a matter of fact, I, I uh, well, let me, I digress just a little. It shot very wildly, let's put it that way. So I was getting anything from the high 150s like the mid 170s and it, it all depended upon me and how I uh, my form getting to full draw etc and so moving past the mass theory here um, because this is just playing a lighter bow there's not a whole lot we can do to to maneuver the mass around it uh, maybe take a little more off of the tips and go for like a pin tip out here uh, could certainly add some speed to the arrow. Uh, but by and large, the entire bow is just pretty light, concentrated at the grip with the with the weight. But, um, okay, so there's the mass piece of things. Well, let's talk about more of the uh, usability, the consistency, the, uh, 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 the, the other qualities, the usability of this particular bow. I would tell you that... Uh, being short, it's 62 inches knock to knock, and the fact that it, it is it is it has quite a bit of reflex to it, um, with not much deflex to match, and in in it happens with that as you bring it to the string and and brace it, it comes with an already higher string angle uh, out there at the the, the tips of the, the bow, so. If you're familiar with string angle and how it affects stack, uh, you know that, that as the limb and the string, they begin to operate over the course of being drawn back. When this angle starts to approach 90 degrees, that is 
the phenomenon that we understand is stack. And I know that you guys all know what stack is. You experienced it in different bows that you've shot, if not the one you're shooting now. Uh, it causes a lot of gain in draw weight at the very end of the draw. Uh, this particular bow uh, hits that stacking point right around 27 inches of draw. And so I think for the end result of this particular bow, it's not, it is kind of a design thing. It, it wasn't intentional, but it turned out that way. Uh, probably a good 27 inch draw bow for good consistent results. And I would tell you that when I was shooting it and it felt comfortable to me where the stack wasn't, wasn't uh, uh, ob objectionable, I guess would be the best way to describe it. Um, I was getting somewhere more in the neighborhood of, of low 160s. So I could hit like a six, 163, 164 with relative consistency. Um, even though we, we saw some shots as high as 175 feet per second. And so it's certainly capable of shooting a very fast arrow. And I think all of the design qualities about it would suggest that. Uh, pretty significantly reflexed. Uh, and a pretty light bow, 175 feet per second. I'm, I'm proud to say that it, it was shooting that, but to get that with any kind of consistency would require being very, very uh, consistent with your form and getting that draw. And, and it feels, it doesn't necessarily feel comfortable uh, at 28 inches. And so how do, we, how do we get the best of both worlds here? To do again, really be very specific about getting that deflex put into the original shape of the bow. And so we want these limbs to kind of chase the string a little bit uh, before it's strung and keep, keep the reflex in the limb, but make sure that it's deflexed at the grip such that it's not necessarily set back so, so far from the grip so that when it is strung, uh, it's not stringing up at such a, a high string angle to start with, and it'll yield a lower string angle at full draw, which will keep it a little more comfortable to shoot. Uh, I think will yield an incredibly uh, fast bow uh, that's more consistent. Uh, this one's certainly fast. Uh, I'm not going to sneeze at 170 feet per second. Uh, it was just difficult to get it with any regularity, and of course. You saw in the video a lot of those higher speeds because it makes me feel better about what I'm publishing. But truth is, at, at its optimal draw length, which I think is about a, a 27 inch draw, uh, it's shooting more along the lines of uh, mid 160s. And so there's, uh, there's your uh, pudding of proof. Uh, the the uh, Perry Reflex designed bow, uh, shorter bow, lighter bow did shoot faster. I, I don't think that that was uh, really going to be in dispute with all of this, uh, but they're kind of close. I would say like 10 feet per second difference, maybe 15, uh, if you're really good about getting a full draw. I know I didn't uh, spend a lot of time talking about the mass theory, and I know that there's a lot more that goes into it than what I've touched on here. Uh, I'm not an expert, like I said. I could try to answer any more questions you may have if you want to drop them in the comments section. Uh, but please make sure you uh, like and subscribe the video, and I will, uh, I will see you again uh, here soon.